A coalition of civil society group under the ages of concerned Nigerians recently thronged the street of Abuja, mounting protests for Nigeria's president to resume or resign from office. With President Buhari spending over 90 days on a medical trip in London, perhaps these concerned Nigerians seem to have a compelling agitation. But the federal government is also saying President Buhari has complied with the provisions of the law by handing over to the acting president and governance is running smoothly. So why fix it if it's not broken? Hmm. How true is this claim? This is our point of departure on this show. It's question time. Welcome to the program. I'm Benga Ashuru. You may also send us a comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Agriculture is one of the major areas the federal government has promised to revamp. In fact, the Minister of Agriculture, Chief Aldo Ogbe, has promised a crash in the price of food commodity by this August. He is our guest on this episode of Question Time. We begin by taking him up on the Yam Export Initiative, which he says it's largely export-driven. Join us in this exclusive interview. Nigeria has been the biggest producer of yams in the world, 61%. And this is the figure from the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, not our figure. And Nigeria has been exporting yams for the last 20 years. But the yams have been going out under the label of another country. They've so been taken from this. here, they've been taken from here, repackaged in a neighboring country and transferred to the UK so, and US. So when you see yams in the shop, they say it's Ghana yam. Most of these yams definitely originated from here. You are projecting 42 million tons. Yes. Annually for export. Our, our, pro our, our production is about 40 million tons. Okay, 40 million we tons. We should be able to take out about 10 million tons at full, at, at full export. So, in terms of the profit margin, what's your projection? The YAM market is about $10 billion altogether, but it's not taken by Nigeria alone. We mentioned that a neighboring African country does that. We mentioned that uh, Brazil produces some kind of YAMs, the West Indies does. None of them matches what we have because we also have 60 varieties of yam in this country. I, I'm keen about the bottom line, the, the figure. Could, could you give us some projection? We can double it. We can double the figure we have now. What figure do we have currently? We have uh, 40 million tons of yam, about no, the same figure. What does that translate to in terms of the, the foreign exchange earning? If we do 10 million tons, we're talking of, of about six, seven billion dollars per annum. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, th there are anxieties over uh, the, the, the fear that this export uh, obsession now could um, lead to, to some deficit in terms of domestic consumption. No, we see it differently. Rather than see disaster, we see opportunity. Because the yams have been going out anyway. People mustn't forget that. Our yams have been going out in the last 20, 25 years under another country's banner. We're saying we can do it directly ourselves if we meet the standards of the world. At this juncture, it's important we do some cost-benefit analysis now. Uh, some people are saying that if the comparative cost is based on channeling this, uh, the resources of this yam export into developing pharmaceutical starch production, that the cost margin, the profit margin it's going to be almost in tenfold bigger than that of exporting. And when the analysis is done, the, the calculation, the, the short arithmetic is done, uh, if one kilogram of yam costs 256 naira, and um, you are exporting 72 tons, that will be 15 million naira. And if the profit margin is twice that, that means you'll be making 15 million naira. But if this is channeled into pharmaceutical starch production, the calculation is that we'll be making about 102 million naira. So the, the, cost, the, the, the question now is that are we not doing penny-wise pounds foolish by exporting, by freighting this uh, produce out of the country? There is one element in that calculation that is missing. The, I saw the gentleman, the pharmacist on TV who made the analysis and in the social media. Did he tell you how much a kilo of yam costs raw in the UK or the US? He forgot that. How much is it? 
a three kilo tuba of yam, which costs 205 naira or two or 300 naira here, costs 15 US dollars over there. That's about 6,000 naira. So the raw yam export isn't as much a loss as people are saying. Number two, what does it cost to set up a factory producing pharmaceutical grade yam flour? You need anything close to two million dollars to set up such a factory. And don't forget this project is not being done by government. It's a private sector initiative supported by government so we can meet all the standards necessary. So now, today is, is, is the Ministry of Agriculture thinking about uh, foreign direct investment in the line of building a We don't even need we plants. don't need foreigners to do it. The pharmacist who spoke is at liberty to do so. So he might not have the capital. Uh, yeah, very strength. few Nigerians today have that kind of capital with the current interest rate profile. For the okay, let, let, let's come to the basics now. I'm going to take you up on your promise to Nigerians. Yeah. On the 17th of July, you promised Nigerians that the cost of food, the prices of food would crash down within weeks. Yes. Nigerians are yet to see that. They will see that a few procedures are, are holding us back. First, we are putting rice into the market on a large scale in a few days' time. You know what's delaying us? The bags we're going to use. They're about ready. Number two, production is increasing. We, we, we've, found, we've found ourselves several, for the umpteenth time, in a situation where administrative bottlenecks have been the bane of many of our policies. How do you intend to deal with many of these bosses? Well, we're working as hard as we can. But let me also tell you, if you hasten and you make one mistake and skip one administrative, especially financial regulations, by the time you're being dragged before tribunals and EFCC, nobody is going to listen to you. You are accused of corruption, of taking arbitrary decisions, and you've got to be careful. It's public money. 